Hey, welcome to Adventures with Peps. Today we are painting this little cute Mongoose Gaming Cadet Judge. So, for those who don't know, Mongoose Games was the Judge Dread provider for the miniature games. Probably, oh my god, it's what, five, six years ago now? Maybe even more? It's probably a lot more actually now that I'm thinking about it. That's scary. Um, But yeah, they produced a load of models back in the day. And in their set, they had two cadet judges. And we are painting one today. So let's dive into the video. Okay, here we are. We've got the model primed. Um, He had, or she had, some black paint on her originally. So as you can see, the gun and the helmet are a slightly different grey because my primer's a little thin. Kicking off things with the Slaughter Red, and we're getting the fiddliest part of the model out of the way. And that is the red stripe that's gonna go around the blue visor on the helmet. Now, this is horrendously wrong. Now that I've looked at pictures of the cadets again, they don't have the red helmet thing. That's just, I don't know what made me think this was a part of it. But it is now, so get over yourselves. This is now part of my judge cadet. She has the red stripe in my head. Maybe it's an honor mark and she scored well in a test or something stupid. But yeah, normally it's an all white helmet. So a little little error there by me, but I kept it in the video, kept it on the model. I think it looks pretty cool once it's all finished. Makes him look like a proper little mini wannabe judge. Then we've moved quickly onto the sand golem, if I can get my camera to focus. I've been having some issues with the focus of late, don't know why. Might be a little dust on the sensor that I need to clean off. And we are using this purely on the little bit of skin that you can see on the chin. Most of you know I use the Crusader Flesh quite a lot, and I'm trying to experiment with different skin colours. And I thought the sand golem would be a nice change. It's not too dark, it's not super pale, it just seems like tanned skin. And of course the grim black, I think you all know where this is going. Uh, yep, if you guess the gun, ding ding, is spot on. Now, the thing that I love with the army painter is the black paint. When you put it on, it, it does what you need it to do. It's not a super rich dark black in any way, shape, or form. But it collects in the shadows wonderfully and gives the effect of a black. So most of the flat paneling is going to end up looking like a dark, dark grey. But because of the black seeping in all, into all the creases, it just gives it a nice black appearance. Just finish up here. There's really not a lot of these colours on the model. Like the flesh was literally one dab. The red was just making sure I had a steady hand. And the black took two dabs and it's done. Look at it. We're zooming through this model. How can I slow this down so I can give you some lore? Um, I know. So yeah, the cadets... They have to go through 15 years of training before they can be street ready. And these little cadets, they have rules in the game. Warlord Games have produced two cadets so far. Oh, some cloudburst blue for the uniform. Yeah, so Warlord Games have produced two cadet models. One that comes with a bike and the Cadet Judge Giant. Mongoose have produced two, which we're now painting one of them. And I'm thinking that gives me, with Judge Giant, that gives me enough cadets to make the Necropolis War squad. The little cadets that go down to the big smelly and find Judge Dredd and help him retake Mega City 1. So I'm thinking I might have to go back to that story, find the names, try and work out who we have once again. And just make a little cadet squad and then have, I don't know, zombies, the dark judges. We could do some like little themed game where they're trying to flee the city from the zombies and the 
street judges that have been took over and they have to try and get out alive to the sewers. I think that could be a fun little themed game. Be really hard for the cadets to win. I think you'd only want them going up against maybe one possessed street judge of a low rank and then a few zombies so they don't get overwhelmed too quickly. But these mongoose miniatures, I have a few of them. With, you've probably seen me paint a few judges now. The sculpts are strange. You get some, like um, the one we painted a while back who has his, uh, he's holding his day stick. Great sculpt, looked great, the paint went on amazing. The cow hab judge was another one. Paint went on really well, really great. The cadets hit and miss. I think the helmets look a bit weird and they're just, there's something lackluster about the model. It's hard to describe. It's taken the paint well, which makes me happy that we will have a nice model at the end. But yeah, it's strange how their quality control was all over the place. I'm not saying Warlord Games is any better with their scaling of figures. The block gangers, I think, are a perfect example of that. You have some massive figures and then you have some skinny, tiny ones. But at least the quality is in every sculpt, whereas the mongoose range... Real hit and miss. Sometimes you got something really good. Other times you got a dud. Just really depends. Like the riot judge. Oh my god. I think uh, in a previous video you'll see. It. It's a horrible model. I feel it has very bad posing. It feels very flat. And its shoulder pads look terrible. It almost looks like they were trying to make Judge Fear. He has like weird man trap shoulder pads. It just ugh, still creeps me out. But it is painted now, plus side. Uh, <laughs> and there we go. That is enough of me waffling, I think. That is the blue uniform all hit up. It's starting to look a bit more like a Mega City One judge. Let that dry for a minute. And we are back. Just noticed I missed her hairline. So I'm just going to use the black paint. Had a little left on the palette. I'm not going to waste the paint. So we're just going to give her a quick blast of black hair. We'll move on to the next colour. And to make it clean up time now, we're going to use some Corax White. Just start clearing up everything. I made some errors along the way. Who hasn't by the time you reach this age? But we're going to clean up the helmet, um, the chain on the badge, the knee pad. Just loading up my brush. I'm not delicate. <laughs> I just want to hit it once and move on with my life. It's funny how, even though I feel this is a badly sculpted model, now that I can see it with paint on, I'm actually really starting to like the model a lot more than I thought I would. It's so weird. This model has sat on my shelf for so long because I didn't like it. And now I'm like, why didn't I just put paint on it? Should have just put paint on it sooner. It's so stupid how your brain just refuses to work with you. Okay, now we're on to the fun bit, the orc skin. Obviously, anything that needs to be green is going to be orc skin. We're talking boots, belt, gloves, uh, knee pads, elbow pads. I've just loaded up the brush. going to try and keep my brush strokes even inconsistent in the direction they're going in. This avoids any streaky lines. But yeah, I'm just going to work my way around the model nice and slowly, making sure that I complete an entire section before I move on. 
the worst thing you can do is let the paint start to dry and then have to go back to touch it up because all that's going to do is wipe off any piece that's already on there and then you have to wait for the model to dry or seal it up before you can actually properly redo it again it's really annoying I've done it a few times with other models so I just want to make sure I'm hitting this up nice and solidly so even though I touched up the knee pad, the blue worked its way through the white undercoat. So I'm hoping the green is just going to cover it up, make it seem like some shading or something. A little bit of battle damage maybe. But I think you can see where I'm going with this. So we're going to skip forward a little bit. So I don't bore you with my waffle. Final few brush strokes on the glove. As you can see, belt's done. Knee pads are done, elbow pads are done. It's really starting to take shape. I can't fully admit to myself, let alone to you guys, I wasted so much time not painting this model. Look at it. It looks really cool now that it's getting paint on it. It's so tiny and cute. I'm shocked that I didn't do this sooner. So we're back to the white paint. Gonna, you're going to see that a lot with this model. It's a small model. And the way I paint is pretty messily. Messily? Is that a word? It's pretty messy. So I have to keep going back and touching things up. I realised that I'd completely greened out her belt buckle. So we're just going to use the white paint to go over that. Knock it back a little bit so that I can put the yellow on. I also messed up by catching the groin with the white paint, so we have to go back and fix that. You try to do things perfectly and it just goes wrong. See, wiping there, I've took a layer of blue off. Which means I'm now flooding that area with blue to recover the damage I just caused. It's so annoying. You make one mistake and then it starts to spiral out of control. But High Lord Blue is the next color on our to hit list. And we're going to use this on the little teeny visor that's on this helmet. I know I've made reference a lot to it being small, but this model is tiny. You gotta think this is a 28mm child model. Obviously in a some body armor and a biker helmet. But it is such a small model. I'm so used to just playing it a little bit loose, a little bit fast, slapping paint down. That when I hit a model this size, I should slow down but I obviously don't. Now we're getting close to the end so it's time for some zealot yellow. Hopefully stuff has dried enough that we're not going to bleed into each other. There's actually not a lot that we have to paint yellow. It's just the shoulder pads and the belt buckle. Oh and obviously the name badge. So let's start with that one. There you go, it's got the little eagle done. Covering up the belt. Get these nice shoulder pads. That take the paint wonderfully. It was when the yellow was going down that I was like, you know what? This is actually a good model. I thought it was a bad sculpt. I still think it's not the best. But it took the paint so well. As you can see. Especially on the shoulders. It's not bad looking. I definitely can use this in games. I think it'd be quite funny to try and do a hot dog run. Maybe have a judge leading some juves into the cursed earth. Juves, they're not juves, cadets. And they get attacked by a mooty gang. Or like I said, we could do the necropolis and have them trying to flee the city into the big smelly. The potential with this gaming system is huge, which is great. And as you saw, we've got the Holy White out now. I'm just going to do...
do that on the helmet. Now it, it comes out grey. It's not white. Don't let it trick you. There's no such thing as a white speed paint. It's a grey paint where the grey will sit in the recesses and shadowy areas of the model. So as you can see, I'm using my finger to dab it off. It just dirties down the white when you do it this way. And there you go. Model is done. When I make the video, you're going to see the picture at the beginning, but I'm going to stick it at the end as well. But we still have the base to do. And by the power of uh, classy editing, we'll come back to that in a second. Final jabs going down. Did you like my magic trick there of uh, skipping forward? I think I just saved you five minutes of your life that you would never get back if you watched me doing that. Give you a quick look of it on the stand and then I'll stick a photo up again. As always, appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate if you've reached this far. Drop me a like, drop me a subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for watching.